Hello, I'm Bill Smith, Bluebird Project Leader. And a few weeks ago we did some Twitter videos, little two minute videos, explaining the Orpheus fuel control system. This is all Lucas equipment, it's largely obsolete, it's mostly not used, so we made a bit of a permanent record. And then somebody decided, because we had a big bunch of short two minute videos, that what we do is make them into one long video, hopefully to make a little more sense. So that's what we're going to try and do, we're going to put the Twitter videos together, um, we'll show you K7's fuel control equipment as recovered, we'll show you inside some of the modules and we'll show you how these things work. We're going to start with the fuel pump which is a, a piece of jewellery in its own right and then we'll tell you about the combined control unit, the CCU, which is in effect the boat's carburetor, its fuel injection system. So we'll take you through those uh, and if you're not bored to tears and you're still enjoying it, we'll do the other half of the fuel system in a separate video. So hope you like it. Somebody asked about the Orpheus fuel system and on your own heads be it because it's full of complicated things. This is um, a Lucas B-size piston pump, workhorse of military and civil aviation for many decades. This is the smallest one, that little baby. There's D-size, C-size, Concorde size, they're enormous. But they're all essentially the same thing scaled up or down. And what you have here is um, a rotor inside which is driven from the engine accessory gearbox, runs full time, has carbon seals to keep the juice on the inside. And what happens is as the rotor turns, fuel is drawn in through this port, filtered fuel. And what amounts of little syringe inside, sucks some up, the rotor travels over to the other side and it gets squeezed back out again. And that way it delivers pressurized fuel to the engine and all the other systems that, that run off it. At this end, you have a hydromechanical governor and that basically it does two things. One, it, it makes sure the engine only runs as fast as it's told to and never go too fast. That's what's in there. And this also generates the lifeblood of the whole system, which comes down as a little pipe. And it's called servo pressure. And don't worry too much about that for now because you'll come to know and love servo pressure as things go on. But that is where the servo pressure is generated and comes down here. Inside this portion, there's a little piston it floats up and down and it fights a constant battle between delivery pressure and servo pressure. Servo pressure makes the engine want to go faster and delivery pressure makes the engine want to go slower. And depending on who's winning the fight with the little piston in there determines how fast the engine is running. So that's the basics of the fuel pump. What we'll do is we'll get a look inside of it next and show you the rotor and the pistons, etc. If you like this, you're not bored already, tell your friends and we'll do some more. Thank you, bye. Hello, right, this is the rotor from the B-size pump. This is the part that's driven by the engine accessory gearbox. There's the spline drive. The shaft runs in carbon bearings, very close tolerance because kerosene is a terrible lubricant. It all has to be lubricated with kerosene. The back runs in a bearing band, which also runs in a carbon bearing, which very, again, very close tolerance, so it doesn't heat the bearing and melt it. That there's the drive for the uh, hydromechanical governor that I mentioned before. But the important things are the little, the pistons. These are the things that syringe fuel. What happens is that is depressed. It sucks fuel in through the back. The rotor turns and it squirts it back out on the other side through a little port. Each of these has a spring in the back. Now the spring is made from shot peened wire. The wire has a hardened shell on it, which means it can perform beyond the theoretical capability of the metal it's made from. So it's not just a spring. 
inside is a little spinner that makes sure that the spring gradually turns and has a tiny teeny hole through it to allow a little bit of kerosene to lubricate the piston the swivelly bit on the end is called a slipper and it has a silvered face on these older pumps and again a minuscule little hole in the end just to let a little tiny bit of kerosene through and what you have is seven of these they're all ground pistons in lapped bores such that they're to about a ten thousandth of an inch and a single molecule of jet fuel can't get by and they constantly just whir round and round doing that sucking in fuel at one side pushing it out at the other and you're probably wondering now as i would be just what exactly makes them do that so we'll give you a look at that in the next video there you go b-size pump rotor Okay, so you're probably wondering just what exactly makes the pistons syringe in and out like that. And the answer is this. This is called a cam plate. And this is the one that was in the lake for 34 years. You can see where the slip has stopped, never to run again. It's actually corroded beyond where it could be reground, so this is now officially retired. And what happens with the cam plate is it goes on there. That's where it fits. And it runs in a pair of little trunnion bearings that sit on the ends of there, such that it can rock back and forth. And what it does is, in rocking back and forth, is it alters the stroke of the pistons. So as long as it's just doing that, nothing happens. But if you do that with it, now suddenly you've got pistons at one side that are squashed in, and pistons at the other that are fully extended. And as it turns, it endlessly sucks in fuel at one side and pushes it out at the other. And that determines how much fuel the pump moves. Now what determines the cam plate angle is this endless fight between servo pressure and delivery pressure. Remember, delivery pressure is what the pump actually makes and sends around the rest of the system. Servo pressure is a separate pressure term that's made in the governor. And the piston that I talked about on the top of the pump is linked to there and it makes the cam plate do that and servo pressure that's the bad twin that's the one that constantly wants the engine doing that as much fuel through it scream its hat off destroy itself eventually the delivery pressure has the opposite effect and wants to destroke the pump and stand the cam plate up and that essentially that battle between servo and delivery pressure is what controls the engine Just a quick demonstration of the auxiliary cam plate. I left this off before because it was just one more thing to think about. But it floats on here on a, a spherical bearing on a thrust ball. And it's got springs behind it. So it's springy. It should have another spring because it should come all the way up to the back of the slippers like that. But what it does is, as the main cam plate pushes down on that side, the other side comes up. And likewise, if you push down on that side, this side comes up. So what happens is, as the rotor spins and the cam plate is stroked, it pushes that over. So as the thing turns, this side of the auxiliary cam plate physically lifts the pistons back out of the holes. And as it turns with the, the main cam plate, it just pushes that side down. So you've always got one side pushed down and the other side lifted up. Because at higher speeds, the springs just aren't enough. And we had a, an engine with this seized in the down, basically seized in that position. And it wouldn't go beyond about 50%. We had to dismantle the engine, free off the thrust ball, rebuild all of this, and it ran perfectly. So that's what the auxiliary cam plate's for. There you go. Just thought you might like that one.
Just a little recap, um, looking at the diagram and a couple of bits that I don't have to hand to show you in the flesh, but I will show you a picture. But a lot of this you've seen, that's the, the cam plate, obviously. This little link at the top is what connects it to the servo piston. And that pin, which is a proper fiddly little thing to remove, you have to clock it round and drop that little pin into that sleeve. So that's an awkward thing. This is the trunnion bearing that the cam plate runs in, lets it rock back and forth out there. Auxiliary cam plate, thrust ball, springs to keep the auxiliary cam plate pushed up to the back of the main cam plate. Things you've seen, pistons, spring seat, spring, rotor, drive for the governor. But then you've got this area here, which includes a circlip, which holds in that bearing. That's a carbon bearing. It has carbon, lead and copper in it. And it's very, as I've said, tight fit to there, a very close tolerance. And that, if it gets too hot, it melts the lead and then the copper goes and then the carbon goes and the whole thing just goes off with a bang. So that has to be right. Then there's a little spring washer sort of thing. I'm not sure what it's called. It'll tell you here if you zoom in. But behind that is this, which is the port insert. And that sits down in the hole and the back of the rotor rests on it. And it's just a push fit. There's no seal or anything. It's just, again, very close tolerance. It has two little ports in it on opposite sides. I'll, I'll show a picture. And one of the ports allows the rotor to suck fuel that way. And the other port, as the rotor turns and the pistons go back down the bores, allow the fuel to be pushed back out again. And that's the kind of final part of the puzzle. Okay, lesson three in B-size fuel pumps. This is the fuel system schematic. And if we show you the bits inside the pump and how the schematic looks, hopefully on the next part of the fuel system, we can start with the schematic and you don't necessarily need to know what all the gubbins is inside. So what you have here is a fuel pump. That's the rotor through there, that's this piece. That's the drive from the engine, goes over there. There's a piston which is there. There's the opposite piston, which is around this side. You've got the slipper and what have you that we showed you. Um, and then there's the cam plate, which is there. That's the cam plate, you just see it cut through. And in this picture, the cam plate is stroked quite severely. And what you have is filtered fuel coming in here. This is low pressure fuel in yellow. And it's being sucked into the piston there, rotor turns and squished out of the piston there. And it comes out this red color. It doesn't actually, it's just for the schematic. The cam plate is being stroked by this little piston, which um, you saw, well, you saw where it lives on the top of the pump. And that piston is winning the battle. It's pushed the cam plate that way and stroked the pump. Because on this side, you have servo pressure, which is denoted in this red color. And that's generated in here, which is the governor part of the pump at the back end. And the servo pressure is pushing on that end of the piston and it's stroked the pump. On the other side of the piston, you have delivery pressure which is being made there on that piston and it comes up here and it pushes on the back side of that piston here but at the moment the servo pressure is winning and that is how the whole engine is controlled the whole fuel system it's this battle between servo pressure delivery pressure so now you can see it on the schematic now you can see it in the hardware hopefully we'll be able to go through the other modules in a similar way This is the CCU, which stands for Combined Control Unit. 
because it does several things. Fuel comes into it here, which is um, the pressurized fuel from the pump. We know all about pumps now. And it comes out in several places. It comes out there, which is main burner pressure. That feeds a ring main on the engine that just keeps the fire lit. It's like the pilot light in your combi boiler. It just keeps everything running. These seven little ports are feeds for individual burners and that is the bit that lets you throttle up and down. These feed the burners that make the engine go faster and slower. In here is a valve, a flow distribution valve or some such thing, uh, I forget what it's called, but that basically allows the engine to start gently without over fueling, getting too hot, that sort of thing. So we'll have a separate look at that. Around here is, that's the idle bypass, that's basically the idle screw, so you can set the idle in your engine. And around here, is the throttle valve. That's the bit you basically put it 30 degrees to start and idle. That's flat out full throttle, back to idle, shut down. And inside there is a valve that we'll look at separately as well. That's just a drain for little bits of scrap fuel that get trapped in various spots and have to be dumped off later. And this whole assemblage on the end is the barometric fuel control, which manages the flow rate of the pump with changing altitude, but we'll look at that separately as well, ignore that. This is just a, a bare casting for show you one or two things on it and orientation. So that's the basics of the CCU. We'll have a look at the other bits individually. There you go, thank you. Thought I'd have a little go at showing you the, the CCU actually on the engine. That's the, the pump, you know all about pumps now. That is the high pressure line, which comes up here to that there, which is where the fuel goes into the CCU. This little thing here is the idle bypass valve and you adjust that to sort out the engine idle. All this equipment over here is the um, barometric fuel control. Down here is the throttle valve. So that's the thing you use to speed up and slow down the engine. And around the back, which is pretty difficult to see and even worse to get at, um, is the seven little lines for the primary burners. And you can just see in the back there, the end of the pressurization valve, the start valve. Up there, that, see if I can point to it, that stainless steel tube which you call a rigid tube, not a solid tube, as I once did and got told that a solid tube wouldn't be a tube at all, it would be a bar. That is the feed for the main burners. That's the fuel that just goes across at a constant rate to keep the fire lit. And that's pumped around all the other burners. So that's where it lives. That's what it looks like when it's installed. Don't worry about the pipes. Um, and just to get you better orientated to where it lives, there's a bit more engine. So, there you go, that's it bolted in place. Hope that was useful. Bye. Another quick video just to show you the um, difference between the main burner and primary burner circuits. This, you can see here, just as a hose comes in the bottom and then the fuel passes all the way through and out into another hose at the top. And that hose goes up to this burner plate, goes up to there. And again, a bit obscured of pipes, but you can see how it passes all the way through and comes up there. And then it carries on up and it ends at that burner plate on the top. But in each burner plate, you can also see there's another hose. And likewise, down at this one again, it has a second hose that comes in here. And likewise, with that one down there, there's a second hose. Now the second hoses, they are the ones that come from the seven ports on the back of the CCU. One port, one hose, one burner plate. The hose that goes all the way round and links through the burner plates is the main burner pressure. And that's the one that is supplied continually to keep the fire lit. It's like the pilot light in your combi boiler. The hose that goes all the way round feeds the pilot light and the extra hoses are the ones that go woomph when you try to fill the bath. That's what they're for. That's the one you throttle up and down. So that's how the fuel is supplied to the burner plates via the two circuits.
good, isn't it? Look at the throttle valve. As I explained before, that is your throttle. That is for starting an idle. That's flat out, full throttle, start an idle, shut down. And it lives, this is the same casting again, it lives down in that hole there. That's the actual throttle valve itself, and that sits in there. And what this is, all the fuel to run your engine is delivered up over from beneath. And inside is one of those, and that's what actually turns. When you turn the lever, that's what actually turns. And the fuel comes up through here, and it goes through these little holes, and into these tiny little spillways, and down these galleries, and they really are super duper small. And it emerges through these drillings in the throttle valve, which you can see they're very, very small. And all the fuel that runs the engine has to pass through those, through these very, very tiny spaces. And ours was damaged. Ours had water damage, the one that came out of the lake. And you may see Hartley Precision pop up now and again on the Twitter feed. Hartley Precision actually very kindly made us a brand spanking new one of these um, at no cost, which was very kind of them. Didn't have to do that. So Hartley, if you're listening, thank you very much. That is the throttle valve. When you start the engine and you move the throttle to there, you've seen the throttle valve with its drillings, etc. That will give you enough fuel for the engine to idle. But you don't want it all at once because you just get a lot of heat, a lot of fire, everything go out of limits, no good. So in here is a valve which allows the engine to light and spool up gradually without the amount of fuel going out of limits. And it's all mechanical. What you have is a sleeve with ports in the sides and a piston. And holding the piston that way is a big spring. And I mean a big spring. And as you start to spool the engine up and the pump starts to make delivery pressure, it pushes on the back of the piston. And a little bit of fuel comes through that port and it goes off to the burners, boom, and it lights. And the engine begins to accelerate. So the delivery pressure comes up. So it pushes harder on the piston and that stretches the spring. And the piston moves down the bore and it finds another set of ports and uncovers those. So now that fuel goes off to the burners so the fire gets bigger, so the engine goes faster, so the delivery pressure goes up, and it moves along and uncovers the next set and the next set, until they're all uncovered, and the amount of fuel you said it could have at this point is now getting through to run the engine, and that's how it spools up gradually, 15, 17 seconds. That's how it works, all mechanical. Simple, but clever. There you go. Now you know how I explained about the piston moving down the bore and uncovering the ports? Well, that's where the piston lives. So we're gonna try and give you a look at the little ports. They're very small drillings and they're a little difficult to see, but you can just make them out there in the, in the side of the, the bore. There you go, that's the little ports. And the piston that uncovers them is in here, which I've dismantled for this special occasion. 
and that is the piston that slides down and uncovers the port and in there you can probably just about see there is a big old spring big big spring and that um that is what it has to fight against there's an adjuster at the back and that allows you to set the spring tension and therefore the rate at which the engine spools up but that is how the engine starts and comes up to speed in a gradual fashion beautiful isn't it This is the barometric fuel control, BFC. And this is the piece I said I do was certainly. This compensates for altitude because it's the requirements of the engine aren't linear. It's not a case of more fast, more fuel. If you're flying high, the air is thinner, there's temperature to consider all the rest of it. And this takes into account altitude. And what you have inside this chamber is a one of these, which is a little stainless steel bellows, hydroformed from a single seamless stainless tube in the most incredible process. And it's like a little barometer capsule. So as the air outside gets thinner, this is actually fed with inlet pressure air from the engine, that will grow. And as you come back down to earth again, that will contract. And as it moves, that in there acts on a little lever and it sits there. You can see that that's the, the plate where the lever goes. And this lever moves just a little bit, just a few millimeters with the capsule. And that is absolutely crucial to controlling the engine. But I'll explain that separately because it's a, a different little set of kit. So we'll do that in a few minutes. But that's what goes on inside of your capsule lever, moves up and down. That's the BFC. Tell me. This is the crucial bit because this applies all over the fuel control system. It all works in the same way. Remember the little lever it moves up and down? Right, well, I've just kind of sketched it out there. And it has in the end of it an annoying little thing called a half ball, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a half a ball. God knows how you manufacture one of those. But there it is, a little half a ball thing. And that goes in there. And because it goes in there, it will swivel around at all sorts of angles and what it means is that no matter what angle that lever is at if you look there the half ball is always flat so it doesn't matter it has no fulcrum it's just a half a ball and what the half ball does is it sits down over the top of that little thing in the bottom of there which if you see has got a little hole in the middle and that's called an orifice plate. Don't Google half ball and orifice plate. Bad things will happen. But what happens is the orifice plate has a hole up through the middle of it and a half ball clamped on the top. And what you've got at the back of the orifice plate is servo pressure. You put your servo pressure in there it tries to come up through the orifice plate. It can't get by for the half ball. But what happens when the capsule expands as the aircraft goes higher and the engine needs a bit less fuel is that capsule rocks the lever, lifts the half ball off the orifice plate and the servo pressure escapes. And we all know what happens in servo pressure escapes. Delivery pressure wins and the engine calms down. And that's how it works. Simple but effective. Okay, the last look at the schematic. Final lesson of the day. This is the fuel delivery pressure in this sort of purple color. And this is the idle bypass valve. You can see it'll just bypass this valve a little bit. You can see a bit of fuel goes around. 
This is the throttle valve. That's the thing that turns and goes from 30 degrees to full throttle back and shut down with all the little spillways and drillings in it. That's that. This is the sleeve with the little ports in and the piston and the big mother of a spring it has to fight against. And that sends fuel to two places. It goes down there, which is main burner pressure, which is the pilot light, keeps the fire alive. And that is the little seven ports that take fuel to the individual burner plates. So that's most of the um, CCU. That's the little drain that just throws out fuel you don't need. Across here, you have the chamber with the little barometric capsule inside, a little convoluted steel capsule. That's the lever through there into the other chamber. There is the half ball, just there, and the orifice plate, that's them there. And you have servo pressure comes up here to the back of the orifice plate. And once it's gone across the half ball, it then just becomes low pressure fuel, which is denoted in yellow. And that just gets returned to the filter or wherever. So that is the whole of the CCU in schematic form. So I hope you've all paid attention. There'll be a test later. I um, hope you found that informative. Same old rules, tell everyone. Cheers, folks. See you later. Bye. Well, if you just sat through all of that and you're still awake, you can safely call yourself an engine nerd. And welcome to the club. It's nice to meet other people with the same mental aberrations that we have. So if you enjoyed that, we're going to do a second one with the rest of the fuel system. And hopefully you'll enjoy that one too. So thanks for watching. See you later. Oh, 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 oh.